Hey everybody, welcome to No DQ and A video right here on youtube.com slash no DQ CAW and of course no DQ.com, your source for the very latest in WWE and TNA, and of course, your source for WWE Hell in the Cell pay per view coverage this Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So check out no DQ.com for all the updates. With that being said, let's get right down to your questions. Hey Aaron, did you know that there's a ghost behind you in all of your videos and is constantly moving and spinning? What are you talking about? A ghost behind me? I don't see any ghosts. What are you talking about? I, I don't see any ghosts. So are you, are you tripping or something? I don't know. All right, now that we got the whole ghost question out of the way, let's get down to the questions for real now. This is from B Cruise 16. Hey Aaron, what are your thoughts on Zack Ryder ending his YouTube series at episode 100? Is it because of his current low card status or the fact that the show has been so ordered down because of WWE taking it over? To be honest with you, I actually had no idea that Zack Ryder was ending his series at 100. I did not know, and I think that tells you all you need to know right there, that a lot of people aren't following Zack Ryder's show anymore, and th there's really no point in him continuing it. Uh, other than the fact that WWE has the YouTube channel and they're making some money off of it, doing all these different video series. But um, the whole purpose behind Zack Ryder's show was for him to gain attention and to get noticed. And he got noticed and um, he got a push for a while and now he's back to the lower card. Um, so the, the show ran its course and there's really no need to keep it going. I, I've checked out an episode every now and then, and it's just the same thing every week. There's nothing different with the show. I think it's time to end it, just my opinion. Hey, Aaron, big fan from since the mayhem, WWFWCW.com days. My question is, why are there no more ref bumps? It was always a fun part of the match. Thanks from Jewel Swiss. I, I think that WWE realizes that the whole ref bump angle has been done to death. It's been overdone so many times, and um, you, you want to have it in moderation. It's good to have things done in moderation, and um, when there actually is a ref bump, it'll mean something. But when you have every match ending with a ref bump, it, it's just cheap booking, and it's a cheap way to do a finish to a match. I, I just think it, it's better if they try to um, be more creative and come up with other ideas other than resorting to a ref bump. And uh, TNA has been worse than WWE over the years, especially uh, during the early days when Jeff Jarrett was the heel TNA champion. It seems like every pay-per-view main event had a ref bump in it. So I, I'm glad they're cutting back on it because it, it definitely was overkill and they were doing it too much. And uh, I think it forces them to try to come up with other ideas and not rely on the old ref bump angle to uh, come to a finish in a match. This is from djvm 4 god one okay? Am I the only one who thinks that Ryback versus CM Punk should not be a Hell in a Cell match? I really doubt these two could pull off a good Hell in a Cell match and the feud really hasn't built up between them. Trust me, you are not the only person that feels that they should just do a regular match. Doing a Hell in the Cell match really uh, puts WWE in a bad spot. It backs them into a corner because you have CM Punk's title reign and Ryback's undefeated streak. And in a Hell in the Cell match, you, you cannot have a cheap finish. You have to have a winner. It's, it's no holds bar, no DQ, no count out. It's pinfall submission only. And um, people expect a clear-cut winner in a Hell in the Cell match. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's definitely not a good idea, especially when it's the first match in a feud. I've talked about this many times before. The Hell in the Cell match, when it was uh, first um, visualized and, and uh, it, it, it first debuted, it was designed to be the finish of a feud. You had Shawn Michaels and Undertaker in a pay-per-view match and it was uh, a no contest it was thrown out so the hell in the cell came up as a as a way to settle the score between the two of them um, so that that's why the hell in the cell match uh, came came to be in the first place and uh, now it's just a random pay-per-view they have hell in the cell matches with no purpose behind them other than it's a themed pay-per-view and we're just gonna have a hell in the cell match for the hell of it um, so yeah, and, it, and it, it makes it even worse when you have 
uh, Ryback's streak and CM Punk's title reign, and you, you don't want to end either of them, but you really have to do something now at Hell in the Cell, or else people are going to feel ripped off. People are going to buy the Hell in the Cell pay-per-view, and they will want to see a decisive winner, and they don't want to see a cheap finish. So if, if you do that, if you, if, you, uh, if you have the cheap finish, then uh, you, you're, you're going to ruin your stipulation. So WWE is uh, in a, in really in a no-win situation at this point, and I've said this before, it's going to be very interesting to see um, what they do at Hell in the Cell this Sunday. This is from B Crew 16 again. Hey Aaron, what are your thoughts on Ric Flair possibly returning to Raw this week? It is in his hometown. I've gotten a lot of questions about Ric Flair and um, the whole general manager situation. There's a lot of rumors going around about Ric Flair returning. And uh, this Monday's Raw just happens to be, of all places, Charlotte, North Carolina, his hometown. Uh, will he return on Raw? There's a possibility, but... Um, I would not say there's any guarantee. Um, if you don't know by now, there's a lawsuit going on between WWE and TNA. TNA feels that um, WWE has been talking to contracted TNA performers and um, you know the whole contract situation. And uh, WWE's been staying away from trying to uh, bring in former TNA talent. You know when this lawsuit is going on. Um, I, I know for sure WWE wants Ric Flair back, and I think it's inevitable that we will see Ric Flair back on uh, Raw at some point. Um, perhaps now they feel the time is right to bring him back, and um, it's been rumored for months that Ric Flair would be coming back, and um, at first it was rumored he would come in to be Dolph Ziggler's mentor, and uh, now the big rumor is that he, he will be back and he will be the new general manager. And um, the whole I, I, I knew that with AJ, like, that was only going to go on for so long, and uh, it, it's done with now, and uh, it, it just, it, it makes sense now for Ric Flair to come back, but like I said, no guarantee, and um, I, I think that anything could happen this Monday on Raw, and there, there's no way to know for sure if Ric Flair's coming back or not, but we'll see. This is from Enigma for Life. Hey Aaron, do you think that the ending of, of the Sting Hogan match at Star K97 was a poor booking decision? I personally feel that Sting should have won the match without help from Bret Hart. Please answer in video. WCW's intention with that match was to try to recreate Survivor Series. Um, Sting would get screwed by the, the crooked referee, and then Bret Hart would come out and um, say, you know. I'm not going to allow this to happen again, and then the match would be restarted, and Sting would win. And uh, the the big botch in that whole match was uh, Nick Patrick was supposed to do a fast count, and for some reason, he did a normal count, and that completely screwed up the entire match and made Sting look bad, and, and just made the whole thing a mess. Um, so I, I I still don't know to this day what what happened there some kind of miscommunication. It was WCW after all. And um, I, I never understood why they would have Nick Patrick do a fast count. They already had Nick Patrick as a member of the NWO and then um, he, he went back to being a normal referee again. And then at Star Katie, he, he does a, a supposed fast count. It, it didn't make sense to begin with. But like I said, that's WCW for you. And uh, I, I just don't know how they could have such a big screw up. This was their biggest pay-per-view of all time. It was a year and a half in the making and um, I mean that was really uh, the beginning of WCW's downfall. I mean one could argue Hogan versus Goldberg. One could argue the finger point of doom with Hogan and Nash but I think at Star King 97 uh, they just dropped the ball um, big time and um, yeah it was just the beginning of things to come in WCW. Hey Aaron, do you think Jack Swagger will finally move back into the title picture again when he returns? There's no way to know for sure because uh, who knows what kind of character Zach, or, uh, Zach, Jack Swagger, I got Zach right on the brain here. There's no way to know what kind of character Jack Swagger is going to return as. Um, right now, they're, they're planning to repackage him and uh, give him a fresh start. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens with him. Um, it could go either way. It, it all depends on if something clicks with the audience. I mean, you, you never know. There, there, was, there was no way to know that Stone Cold Steve Austin was going to be this huge superstar. 
Um, you, you knew the guy had talent, but he just had to find the right character, the right gimmick that would catch on with the audience. Same with Triple H. Uh, the Hunter Hearst Helmsley gimmick didn't really catch on. But then when he, he started to, to gain the edge and uh, he joined up with Shawn Michaels, uh, he started getting over with the crowd. So um, you, you never know with Jack Swagger. I mean, definitely the guy has talent. Um, it's all a matter of, of just finding the right character by finding the right character for him and sometimes you have to go back to the drawing board and you gotta you gotta try different things and experiment so we'll see hey Aaron what is your opinion of Santino do you feel like he could ever be a legit legitimate main eventer um, I don't think so I think that um, Santino is good doing the comedy wrestler routine and um, I, I, I just don't think that he's going to reach that next level. He's one of those guys that is only going to go so far. And um, he, he's been that comedy act for so long now that um, I just don't think people would buy into him as a main eventer. And I remember uh, Elimination Chamber, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, and he, he almost won the whole thing. And uh, I mean, the people in the, the crowd were into it, but it just wasn't very believable seeing him uh, almost winning a main event match. It just it just didn't feel right. And um, as far as my opinion of Santino, I, I liked the character when he was a heel. Um, but ever since he became a babyface, I think it's been really watered down. And it, it just got old for me after a while. But um, he, he is very good at playing that um, mid to lower card comedy wrestler. He's always been good at that. And it, it just... Uh, it gives him something to do on the roster, and I, I think he'll continue doing that. But no, I don't see him uh, being a legitimate main eventer. All right, that'll wrap it up for no DQ and A video. Thanks as always for watching. Stay tuned to the YouTube channel, youtubecom no DQCW. I've been posting my top 25 matches of all time countdown, so keep watching those videos. Keep spreading the word on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, don't forget about home the cell coverage this Sunday at NoDQ.com. With that being said, I'll see you next time.